In war, knowing the location of your enemy is essential, but knowing where your own forces are is just as important. During the Battle of Britain, incoming aircraft could be tracked by radar as they approached the coastline. Once over the land, the Observer Corps could follow their progress either visually or by sound if there was cloud cover. So how would you know where your fighter aircraft were, given that the chain home radar system only looked out to sea and the Observer Corps plots could be approximations? The answer lies with a device called Pipsqueak. Pipsqueak used these two devices, a master and remote contactor. This clockwork device was fitted to an aircraft's radio, making it transmit for 15 seconds every minute allowing ground-based direction finding stations to take a bearing on the aircraft. The results from three ground stations would give you a relatively accurate plot. The contactors were attached to the standard aircraft radio set for transmitting and receiving speech, which in 1940 was a TR-9. What we have here is a TR-9J fitted to Coastal Command aircraft, but Fighter Commands were equipped with the outwardly identical TR-9D, which, in a Spitfire, would be located in the middle of the fuselage underneath this hatch. The TR-9 was one of the weak points in the RAF's defensive system. First produced in the early 1930s, by 1940 it was showing its limitations. It used the same increasingly crowded high-frequency bands as domestic radios. It had limited range and was prone to interference. A much better VHF very high-frequency radio, the TR-1133, was available and had been used operationally by the time of the Battle of Britain, but there weren't enough of them to equip every squadron. Rather than having two incompatible radio systems operating in Fighter Command, the decision was taken just to use the older system until more VHF sets became available. While this was a situation which deeply annoyed Air Chief Marshal Dowding, the head of Fighter Command, it proved functional enough to allow his aircraft to operate and be directed to where they were needed. If you'd like to find out more about the Battle of Britain, why not visit the Royal Air Force Museum?